This is an Acer branded uh, LGA1155 motherboard which I got for really cheap money and uh, I got this thing bundled with a processor and some RAM and I pretty much only got it to rip the CPU out and put it in my editing machine since it actually came loaded with an i7. Uh, however that leaves me with my old uh, i5-2500K uh, to spare and uh, I figured we'd uh, just take this thing and turn it into a bit of a Frankenstein machine. So the stuff I got with this board was this uh, uh, really dinky kind of Intel stock cooler like cooler which is looking like shit. Although it did ship with a decent uh, sun on fan uh, and uh, 16 gigabytes of uh, uh, RAM DDR3 1600 divided up in uh, uh, 4 gigabyte modules and uh, I think this is the actual IO plate for it to go. So uh, well, it does look like a bit of a weird form factor. This seems to be some ITX standard board, so it'll fit in a micro ATX case, which I have a few of. And uh, I also have uh, this cooler, which is built for LGA775. Uh, this is my old server cooler. Uh, so the fan is shot on it, but uh, I've removed the uh, pushpin mount for LGA775, and this thing actually fits perfectly with the uh, Acer uh, LDA1155 uh, cooler mount uh, because we have these giant holes in here which uh, perfectly line up with the screw holes some M3s through there and this thing will mount like a rock so we pretty much have all the stuff we need to put together a reasonable enough uh, little secondary gaming editing machine uh, I've also got a few random semi-old graphics cards lying around. Uh, I think I've got this. An AMD 7770 which may or may not work and I believe a 6850 which uh, should work just fine. So let's get at it. Let's uh, turn this into something useful. Now let's start out with the ancillary stuff which we're going to need to fix because uh, this CPU cooler has 50, 60,000 hours on it. It's very old and it's been running 24-7 and as a result of that the fan makes this noise. those aren't bearings anymore so we're gonna have to fix that and I'm figuring the Acer fan we got with the set is gonna bolt on well enough on that I think but uh, we just need to disassemble this thing first and off comes the fan and indeed that is never going back there again whoops oh well is ruined anyway. Uh, we're not going to be needing this shroud anymore. Off you go. Much better. So the next step is uh, actually maintain a fan and uh, for that I figured we'd use some of these uh, cheap uh, silicon standoffs I've gotten off of eBay and uh, just pretty much jam them in there between the fins. I might have to cut off a bit of that to make it fit properly because the screw holes of a fan align quite perfectly with the the heat pipes of a cooler, so it's going to be a very tight fit, but I think it's going to work well enough. There we go. So, all I've done is I've taken a little chunk out of the end which goes between the fins just to make it a bit flatter and uh, I just uh, poke it in there. Like so. And those are not going anywhere. And on goes the fan. Like a factory mount. And I would say that's good enough for me. And here's a close up of how well the CPU cool actually made to the 1155 screw holes. As you can see, these holes line up rather perfectly. And I've bent them up ever so slightly just to give it a bit more spring tension as we bolt it down to the motherboard and uh, that's going to be sitting there very very sturdily and here comes the thermal paste correction brigade watch me give a toss and let's 
let's bolt it down. And that cooler could not receive a better mounting. That's on there rock solid. Not going anywhere. Sweet. That's a nicely recycled LGA775 cooler, which is going to be more than capable enough of cooling this processor. For a case, we're going to be using one of these uh, Fujita Siemens uh, cases I, I got out of the trash some time ago. These are data from about 2008, and they're pretty decent cases. AT, uh, micro ATX standard, and uh, nothing too fancy about them. Although they're very Hey, rickety, so I'm going to load this guy up with some uh, automotive soundproofing stuff. Some in the bottom, some in the top there, and uh, perhaps some around here where you main for drives. This is a bit of an odd drive mounting scheme where you slide them in like so and bolt them to the case. Yeah, but that works excellent since you can have a very easy time just putting one screw into an SSD and uh, zip time the rest in place, which is indeed what I'm planning to do. And we're going to be putting some rubber grommets to mount that fan because that's just tied hard to the case, which can, it's going to be needlessly loud. So well, let's just return once I've got that done. Oh, there we go. A lot of uh, foam cutting later. We have pretty much all the ingredients of a rather quiet computer case. So I have cut up some of the automotive foam. It's uh, pretty much covering every possible surface in there, even right of the front panel there, and a large majority of the side panel, as well as the bottom, of course. Uh, and I also took the liberty of stealing a cover from another one of these cases. I've got a few, and same proof in as well. So I think that's going to do a decent enough job. So let's start installing hardware. Oh, yeah, and I did just kind of shovel the bolt and SSD in there. We're using two screws, it's going to be in there good enough. <coughs> it's some rather old Samsung, uh, I don't even know what the model number it's a, It's from like 2013, 250 gigabytes out of an old laptop of mine. And I put the rear fan on rubber grommets. There's actually just two of these uh, uh, holding it to the case, whereas the other ones are just kind of leaning against these because yeah only two holes and got the IO plate installed we're pretty much ready to put everything in there and one really fun and exciting front panel header conversion later said no one ever uh, we've got is something which is really starting to look like a PC so a PC I've chosen is uh, a Zalman 450 watts random piece of crap which smells like tobacco uh, this is the one which I did a video on some time ago, replacing the primary side capacitor and uh, I believe a power supply, a power factor correction uh, transistor. So it's a service unit, it should have all new caps and it's the only one I've got which got the prerequisite uh, dual graphics cards, power connectors. Uh, because indeed that's the only one card left in this build and here are our contestants. So these are remarkably similar cards. Uh, this is my old uh, HD 7770, uh, which I believe is gone up in smoke and not to ever return again, but hey, we'll give it a shot. And uh, this is a rusty HD 6850 or 6870. Does it say? 6850. So it's a pr two pretty damn similar cards. Except uh, the 7770 uses considerable less power, and I think that's when you re only requires the one PCI Express power connector, so it's preference, but yeah, I think it's dead. But we'll give it a go. Before we start worrying about the graphics cards, though, let's just give this thing a whirl as it is to just, just to see uh, if we've actually managed to assemble it properly. So here we go. And uh, that rear fan is incredible loud. Oh, there we go. It did something. And powered right off. Oh yeah, there should be a system from an old laptop on this SSD, so... 
It's an Intel machine, so I would actually not be surprised if this even works. Ah, yeah, there we go. Running like a charm. So, let's start worrying about the graphics. Because we don't want this Windows installation anyway. Yeah, we definitely do not wish to be running a five year old 32 bit installation of Windows 7 on this thing. No, no go away. Alright, so let's try with my presumed dead 7770. I think the thing this card did. Aside from two power cords, was just nothing. Wouldn't ever be detected. Yeah. Computer's booting off now. Entirely ignoring the card. Yeah, it's as dead as ever. Next. Mm -mm, this card is great. All rusty and broken and horrible and full of... Whatever that might be in there. But I think it works. I think this card does work. Mmm. Crusty. Moment of truth. Ah, eh, we've got picture. The rusty old piece of shit's actually working, so that's what we'll go with. Hmm, you know what? I get an excellent opportunity to be incredible later here because these coolers are identical and this one's in much better shape, so I'm just going to swap those over rather than bothering to clean this thing up. Besides, the fan saying it's like shit on it. Oh, there we go. Rusty sh piece of shit card with an almost brand new cooler. This thing has uh, so few hours on it because I always ran an aftermarket cooler on the on the 7770 uh, up until I broke. So. Let's get the computer going now. Ah, oh, there we go. Graphics card installed. And we even got a decent wire management job out of this thing. We've got very little restricting the airflow from the front to the CPU cooler there. Perhaps a bit sparse on the graphics card with its uh, rather limited clearance there. But it could be worse. I've seen worse. It's not a super high powered card anyways. So, with that, let's just get an OS from this thing, which is more than 32 bits, and see how it performs. Oh, there we go. Windows installed, and I took the liberty of actually installing an optical drive of this thing just for the granny factor. And I, I, I'm really starting to dig this machine because just. I'll, let me bring out my 2008 Fujitsu Siemens Esprimo desktop with its Pentium processor and Windows Vista and play some Skyrim on it. <laughs> uh, installed the Passmark's performance test and it seems to be doing quite well for itself. A bit 7,000 points is uh, well above the average for 8500k. It's probably got to do with the fact that we've got to four sticks of RAM installed and rather fast RAM at that. So that's not bad. So now all I'm going to do is uh, give it some uh, thermal testing because I'm not really sure how hot and loud this thing is going to run. It certainly doesn't have a quite adequate ventilation but uh, it could surprise us. Oh, there we go, that's a very full load with a Prom 95 on small FFTs and the Fermark running at the same time and uh, uh, we don't seem to have, have any uh, temperature issues, uh, in fact it's running relatively cool with these uh, uh, CPU and GPU both running at uh, about 70 degrees. As far as noise levels go, well, it's not a super quiet computer by any means, but uh, it's reasonable. That's right in front. Fair amount of noise coming from the side as well as the GPU fan. But all in all, it's not too bad. It's uh, dissipating 255 watts all in all. So that's uh, a fair amount of heat to be pumping out of this little chassis. And it is pulling in a surprising amount of air from the front, uh, despite having no actual intake fan. 
a fair amount of nozzles are coming from the power supply because it's it's rather old and it's probably no more than 75 percent efficient uh, that's probably number one on the upgrade list for this thing but yeah beyond that I think we're pretty much good to go. I'm gonna let this thing sit and uh, fry overnight since uh, I uh, this the graphics card in it is actually out of the trash, uh, hence the rust and uh, it's reflowed. Uh, that's what's the issue. I just reflowed the the main GPU chip and it started working again. So yeah, uh, it's not gonna be the most reliable thing in the world. And for all we know, it could last for ten hours and then just break. But we'll, we'll give it some hell. A computer should manage to run for full load for one night, I would say at least. So today has turned into tomorrow and we're still running. Uh, CPU temps about 70C, GPU temps about 75. Everything's looking quite alright. Uh, although, uh, if we have a look at the outlet temperature of the power supply, uh, we've got almost 50 C coming out of that and it's just revving the fan at pretty much full speed and it's basically just a giant pile of shit but uh, yeah for a computer this cheap I'm not going to complain when I get my hands in a better pay supply I'll just shove it in there but for the time being I'm happy with this so thank you for watching cheerio Now the most important question is, uh, will it run Crisis? And frankly, I cannot answer that since I don't own Crisis. However, I do have Fallout New Vegas, which is just installed and put on maximum settings, and it's running steadily at well over 60 FPS. Well, well over. Pretty steadily at 60 FPS. I'd say that's not too bad. That's certainly playable.